This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com. Hi, I'm Shahar Boyayan, your host, and this is Boomerology Revealed. On today's episode, we are going to check why millennials are so unhappy. We are going to learn how to manage stress and go down memory lane. So let's watch. As boomers, every day we deal with different generations. After all, our aging parents were from the great generation and our kids are probably Y or X kids, right? So today we are going to try to understand a little bit more about the Y generation. Most of us have kids in that generation. So here for you is Mary. Mary is a Y generation and she's very happy with her life, but she does feel a little depressed. And why? That's what we are going to see today. Mary, of course, has Boomer's parents. And they were raised by their parents from the Great Generation. Well, their parents, they have faced the Great Depression. So they always worried about security and being prosperous in life. So they told their kids, hey kids, you know what? You have to work very hard. If you work hard, you are going to have security and prosperity. So don't forget, work hard. Oh, grandpa is not doing very well lately. Okay, so then the boomers, grandpa, go sit down. The boomers start thinking, okay, so that's what we are going to do. We are going to work hard and be prosperous. Well, at the beginning, they went through their hippie years, but after they were over with that, they went, they went after careers. And they found out that not only they could become prosperous, they could become even more prosperous than they ever dreamt about. That was a big deal for them. They became very optimistic. Gee, 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 gee. So they told their kids, the white generation, hey, Mary, you can be whatever you want. You have the power. You're so fantastic. You can get anything in life. They were very optimistic about Mary, and Mary believed them. So she started to think, I am special. I can get whatever I want. I can even get more than my own parents, because after all, I don't want just prosperity and a green lawn. I want a lawn full of flowers and with my own unicorn because I'm special. This is the moment Mary started becoming, becoming delusional because no one is special per se. So when she started going out there and maybe even start to get in jobs, she found things were not exactly as she wanted. After all, if she is special, she doesn't have to work hard. Things should come to her. And more important than that, she wanted personal fulfillment. You know, like follow your passion thing? It's very important to Mary. So she doesn't want just to have a career. She wants personal fulfillment. But because she's special, she kind of feels entitled that she doesn't have to do anything to get that. And that's where she started feeling a little depressed. As we all know, we have to work hard and a career takes some time for you to really advance in that. And there is no way out of that. And that sense of entitlement kept her depressed. It's very easy to see if a white person is really feeling entitled. Ask them if they feel they are special or different than the others. If they say yes, ask them why. If they have a hard time saying the why, that hints you that they are feeling entitled to have, but they really don't know the why they are special. It actually, if you, if you hire people from the white generation, that's a very good question to ask because you're going to see if they really have a purpose and they really did something to make them special or if it, that's just the entitlement feeling that they have. There's another thing that happens with Mary that didn't happen with any other generation and it's the Facebook approach. You know, in Mary's life, everybody's life is out there. It's public, right? Not only that, when you look at Facebook, everything that you see is very positive. They put the best out there. So she's always comparing herself to other people and thinking everybody has a better life than her. Everybody has better relationships than, than her. Everybody has more fun than she does. And she feels extremely depressed. Our question now is how the family works with a Y kid in order to make them go through this phase and really be happy in their lives. You have to, to tell them always, 
keep being wildly ambitious. The white generation is very ambitious. But you will have to work hard to get things. Do not compare yourself with other people. Just look at yourself and what you're capable of doing. Stop comparing yourself to other people and keep doing. By working hard, not comparing yourself to others and keeping your ambition there, you will be able to achieve whatever you have dreamt of. This is how we should talk to them. And this is how we need to understand why they, go, they are going through this phase. This is widely amongst the Y generation, no matter in which country they are. Okay? Because after all, we boomers, we are all optimistic. We be, believed in the love and peace and power, flower power. We put that in their heads and then they started thinking, yes, everything is fantastic. I'm fantastic. Therefore, I, need, I, I will get everything even though I don't put the effort that it needs to be there. Okay, so I hope today you really enjoy knowing a little bit more about the inside psychic of uh, the Y generation and that helps you with your own kids. Here's an interesting fact that I found out. You know that stress levels are really declining? I think that's fascinating, especially when we think about the economy and all the mess around us these days. It's very interesting. Now, more interesting is how boomers deal with stress. Some studies have shown that boomers actually deal with stress a lot better than millennials, for example. We are more flexible, maybe just because of the fact that we learn how to go with the flow. So we have less stress, but we have a stress about money, about work, and housing costs. Those are the things that really increase that stress level. So it's important for you to understand that even though you might have this tendency now to go more with the flow and be less stress, when stress comes up, you need to manage. So here are a few things that you can do to, to manage your stress. One of them, for example, is think positive. Yes, I know that's not as easy as it sounds. I'm a half-empty half glass myself. But it's a training process, right? So you have to train in order to start thinking positive. After all, that will impact the outcome of things happening in your life. Eating healthy is extremely important. Believe me, what we eat has an impact in our mood. For example, sugar is not very good for you to be in a good mood. Exercise, we all know that. At least moving a little bit. Create for yourself a network of support. Some friends that you can go talk to them and open up. Put things out out there. It's very important to create the support network. And create some hobbies. Get into some hobbies. You know, actually like collecting, whatever it is you're collecting. There are several tasks related to collecting, like, you know, displaying, keeping files about it, depending on what you are collecting. It can be really, really fun and keeps the stress level down. I, for one, for example, I like to do some type of crafts every single day. That keeps my mind free to think about new ideas and new things and keeps the stress away. So an hour or so a day is just fantastic. So here are a few tips for you to manage better stress, you know, and just live life happy. Sometimes in life we have to deal with new things and we really don't know how to navigate that new environment. For example, incontinence can be one of these. You might have that yourself or a loved one has that problem and found out recently. So you really don't know what type of products to buy, what size. It can be quite complicated because there are many, many options in the market and many, many brands. I just want to show you something I found in the supermarket the other day that is actually a sample pack for incontinence. There is one for men and one for women. The men one comes with male guards and briefs in different sizes. And the women come with different pairs of underwear for them and also a lot of information inside. It's just a great way for you to buy once, check it out with your loved one, which one they need, and then you will know what to buy or actually at least what model or what size to buy. So if you or anybody that you know is dealing with incontinence, this might be a great option for you to know what is the right product for them. Sometimes in life, we need to go and find more friends. There are many, many, many reasons for that. Sometimes we relocate from city to city. Sometimes we lose a loved one. Many, many reasons. Well, what can you do to find new friends? One interesting thing that you can do that I, I find it very interesting is go to meetup.com. Meetup.com. You know, when you go there, it's going to show in your local area 
what groups they have that you can join. There are groups of every single type and there are many just for boomers. For example, if you're single, there are single groups for boomers out there. Or if you're interested in yoga, if you're interested in, in other things, whatever it is, collectibles, dolls, they have groups for that in your area. So by going to meetup.com, you will find a whole new world. Actually, the other day I tried that because I only talk about things that I, I experienced myself. And I ended up going to a breathing class so to teach you how to breathe. And I have to tell you, I was uncomfortable at the beginning. I almost didn't go inside the place because I thought, well, I, I'm not into this kind of stuff. I was just trying to find something fun to do. But I managed to get in and meet some very nice people and I had one of the best nights in my life. It was actually, if I found a whole new world with breathing exercises and, and getting rid of bad energy because you know, you're just breathing in your whole body, ex oxygen in, bad energy out. It was a fantastic experience that I found through Meetup. So go to meetup.com and check the groups in your local area. You're gonna love it. Hey. Join me in memory lane now. Let's go back when we were kids. What were your favorite toys? I had a few myself and you know, I actually like to remember those and even talk to my daughter about it every now and then. One toy that I really liked was called the Super Bowl. Remember that one? It used to be a big black ugly ball, but it would bounce, it had power, it would go up in the sky very easy. It was very, very powerful, a lot more than the ones we find today. It was fun, it, it was not pretty, but it was fun, and I used to go around the house with it all the time. Actually, I got in trouble a few times because it would break things, right? It was heavy, but it was so cool. That was one of my favorite toys in that time. What favorite toy did you have? This show is made possible by people like you. So please share it around, rate, give thumbs up, leave your comments and questions. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget, for more episodes, go to boomerologyreviewed.com. See you next time. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com.